of the promotional mix, sales promotions. When we talked about sales promotions initially, I told you that they tend to be very short term, trying to give this quick short boost to your sales. Historically, companies have ignored sales promotions. It's very hard to define. It's very hard to get your mind around what all this is. And so companies would kind of keep money aside and, and if they didn't spend it on advertising or their sales force or something else, then they would take it and put it into sales promotions. Well, what they found out is if they did the promotions correctly, which is a big if, if they did it correctly, sales promotions are highly effective. They work really well. But to work really well, you have to change them all the time. And that's what's difficult. That's what makes it hard to manage. You bring somebody in who's really good at, at couponing strategies. Well, as you'll see in a few minutes, if you keep couponing, it loses its effectiveness. Can they make that switch to something else? That's what it takes to be effective. You have to constantly change it. So let's look at some examples of what we mean by sales promotion. In no way is this an exhaustive list. Okay, It's just a preliminary, very limited list. If we look at B2B, I have some common types listed up here. Allowances are when we give our customers money. It's very common in the B2B market to use promotional allowances where I'll give my customer, another business, some money and say, okay, I'm giving you this money. In exchange, you are to feature my product in your advertising or in exchange, you need to put my product on display or in exchange, your salespeople have to mention our product. You're doing something else. And it's real important that you document what it is they're doing. If you don't document that, then legally it would be considered a bribe. So you want to make sure you stay clear of that. Document what you're doing. You may have a sales contest for your customer's sales force. You know, your customer sales force is selling product from a lot of different companies probably. So we'll say, okay, out of everybody who's selling our product, whichever salesperson sells the most, we'll give a TV to or a vacation or whatever. And that's a way of encouraging sales to our customer's sales force. Trade shows we talked about um, in the last lecture when we were looking at the personal selling process. Trade shows are a great way to reach our customers, um, to tell them about our product, to tell them about our company. Now, merchandising is kind of an interesting one because one of the terms I told you that we always want to avoid is the term free advertising. And advertising can't be free because by definition, advertising is paid for. Usually when people use the term free advertising, they're actually talking about merchandising. And merchandising is when you give away product that has your name on it. So if I give away t-shirts or polo shirts that have our logo, that's merchandising. If I give away pens or paperweights or whatever, that's merchandising. So it's not free advertising, it's merchandising. Okay, those are just some common ones for B2B. Let's take a look at some common ones for consumer. One is rebates. Rebates are a real interesting type of sales promotion because consumers really respond to rebates on the whole. They think, aha, I can get $10 back if I buy this product. I'm going to buy it. But the thing is, many times they lose the receipt or they forget to submit the rebate. And so the company gets the benefit of offering the rebate, but they always, they, excuse me, they don't always have to honor it because the consumer doesn't fill out the required paperwork or contact them as they should. Now some companies do it differently. Some companies do it right there on the spot. So if you buy the product, you automatically get the rebate. And so th that deals with that. But rebates do encourage sales. Giving out free samples can be very effective. Having good displays can be very effective. Offering games. This is huge. This works really well with consumers, especially teenagers. But this also illustrates why it's so important to change up your sales promotion all the time. 
Imagine if McDonald's ran their Monopoly game nonstop. They never, ever ended it. There would be no incentive to, or sense of urgency to go in and buy something trying to find Boardwalk. Okay, you know the game's always going to be there, and you'll just see the next time you go in. But by having it end, that urgency is there. I got to go. I got to go check it out before they stop. Okay, the last one we're going to talk about are coupons. As a consumer, I like coupons. As a consumer, I cut them out. I have a coupon organizer. I use digital coupons. You never, ever, ever want to get behind me at a grocery store on double or triple coupon day. I'm just warning you, don't do it. But as a marketer, I really don't like coupons. Really don't. Because most companies don't use them properly. And I'm going to give you a very simplified view of coupons and why I have some issues with it. We're going to look at three scenarios when coupons are issued and what can happen as a result. Okay? They all start out the same way where we have unit sales going along of our product, we hit the coupon period, and our sales are going to go up. Okay, that's always going to happen. Now, I do want to put a little warning in here. These are my drawings, so don't get hung up on the shape of the curve or anything. I'm just trying to illustrate a point. In this first scenario, what happens after the coupon period? What actually ends up happening is our sales level off lower than where they started. This happens when a company coupons too often. I am aware of a company, and for obvious reasons, I'm not going to tell you which one, who puts, it's a restaurant, and they put coupons in the paper every Sunday. And each of these coupons are good for one week. They do that the first three Sundays of every month. The fourth Sunday, no coupons. They could never figure out why sales dropped the last week of the month. They were sure it had something to do when welfare checks were distributed or something like that. No, it didn't. It Because people got to the point where they depended on those coupons. They knew they could count on them. They look for those coupons. If they don't have a coupon, they don't buy the product. And this is what I see over and over and over again in so many companies today, especially with food products. They are always have coupons in the paper or coupons that are out there. There's no reason to do this. People will not buy your products then unless they have a coupon. You're better off just lowering your price a little bit. Lower your price, save yourself the cost of printing, distributing, or, or however you do distribute your coupons. Save that money, okay, and just lower the price. The second scenario that can happen it's just like the first. We start off with unit sales at a certain level, hit the coupon period, things go well. But what happens after the coupon period is that sales level off where they started. So the only boost we got to sales was during that coupon period. Well, you may think that's a good thing, but it's not. Let me explain what's happening. For me, let's say I, I buy Tide laundry detergent. So I buy Tide. I buy Tide. I always buy Tide. I'm loyal to Tide. I get a coupon for Cheer, so I buy Cheer, and then I go back to Tide because that's what I'm loyal to. Okay? So my behavior hasn't changed. The reason my behavior hasn't changed is because I view this product that I had the coupon for as a direct substitute for what I'm loyal to. So as soon as I don't have a coupon, I'm going to go back to the product I'm loyal to. to. Now, why isn't this a good thing, though, in the short run? It's because during that coupon period, we're actually going to lose money. Look at that profit line. During the coupon period, we not only have the cost of printing and distributing that coupon, but if that coupon's for a dollar, that's a dollar hit to our profit per product. Okay, it's not profitable. So when should we offer coupons? We should offer coupons in this final scenario. When after the coupon period, sales are going to level off higher than where they started. What has happened here is people have tried the product 
and by trying, by using, by experiencing the product, they see what the competitive advantage is. So they continue to buy the product even though they don't have a coupon. That's when a coupon should be used. That's when it's effective. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion of promotion. We've looked at a lot of different things, and I bet it changes the way that you look at some of the promotions you're exposed to. Have a great day.